Chapter One of Maria Chapdelaine. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Bruce Peary. Maria Chapdelaine by Louis Aymon. Translated by W. H. Blake. A Tale of the Lake St. John Country. Peribanca. Ita Misa Est. The door opened and the men of the congregation began to come out of the church at Peribonka. A moment earlier it had seemed quite deserted, this church set by the roadside on the high bank of the Peribonka, whose icy snow-covered surface was like a winding strip of plain. The snow lay deep upon roads and fields, for the April sun was powerless to send warmth through the grey clouds, and the heavy spring rains were yet to come this chill and universal white the humbleness of the wooden church and the wooden houses scattered along the road the gloomy forest edging so close that it seemed to threaten these all spoke of a harsh existence in a stern land but as the men and boys passed through the doorway and gathered in knots on the broad steps their cheery salutations the chaff flung from group to group the continual interchange of talk merry or sober at once disclosed the unquenchable joyousness of a people ever filled with laughter and good humour cleophas pesson son of tade pesson the blacksmith was already in light-coloured summer garments and sported an american coat with broad padded shoulders though on this cold sunday he had not ventured to discard his winter cap of black cloth with hair-lined ear-laps for the hard felt hat that he would have preferred to wear beside him egide simard and others who had come a long way by sleigh fastened their long fur coats as they left the church drawing them in at the waist with scarlet sashes the young folk of the village very smart in coats with otter collars gave deferential greeting to old nazaire larouche a tall man with gray hair and huge bony shoulders who had in no wise altered for the mass his every-day garb short jacket of brown cloth lined with sheepskin patched trousers and thick woollen socks under moose-hide moccasins well mr larouche do things go pretty well across the water not badly my lads not so badly every one drew his pipe from his pocket and the pig's bladder filled with tobacco leaves cut by hand and after the hour and a half of restraint began to smoke with evident satisfaction the first puffs brought talk of the weather the coming spring the state of the ice on lake st john and the rivers of their several doings and the parish gossip after the manner of men who living far apart on the worst of roads see one another but once a week the lake is solid yet said cleophas Passon but the rivers are no longer safe the ice went this week beside the sandbank opposite the island where there have been warm spring holes all winter others began to discuss the chances of the crops before the ground was even showing i tell you that we shall have a lean year asserted one old fellow the frost got in before the last snows fell at length the talk slackened and all faced the top step where napoleon la liberte was making ready in accord with his weekly custom to announce the parish news he stood there motionless for a little while awaiting quiet hands deep in the pockets of the heavy lynx coat knitting his forehead and half closing his keen eyes under the fur cap pulled well over his ears and when silence fell he began to give the news at the full pitch of his voice in the manner of a carter who encourages his horses on a hill the work on the wharf will go forward at once i have been sent money by the government and those looking for a job should see me before vespers if you want this money to stay in the parish instead of being sent back to quebec you had better lose no time in speaking to me some moved over in his direction others indifferent met his announcement with a laugh the remark was heard in an envious undertone and who will be foreman at three dollars a day perhaps good old la liberte 
but it was said jestingly rather than in malice and the speaker ended by adding his own laugh hands still in the pockets of his big coat straightening himself and squaring his shoulders as he stood there upon the highest step napoleon la liberte proceeded in loudest tones a surveyor from roberval will be in the parish next week if any one wishes his land surveyed before mending his fences for the summer this is to let him know the item was received without interest periwanka farmers are not particular about correcting their boundaries to gain or lose a few square feet since the most enterprising among them have still two-thirds of their grants to clear endless acres of woodland and swamp to reclaim he continued two men are up here with money to buy furs if you have any bear mink muskrat or fox you will find these men at the store until wednesday or you can apply to francois paradis of mistassini who is with them they have plenty of money and will pay cash for first-class pelts his news finished he descended the steps a sharp-faced little fellow took his place who wants to buy a fine young pig of my breeding he asked indicating with his finger something shapeless that struggled in a bag at his feet a great burst of laughter greeted him they knew them well these pigs of armidas's raising no bigger than rats and quick as squirrels to jump the fences twenty-five cents one young man bid chaffingly fifty cents a dollar don't play the fool jean your wife will never let you pay a dollar for such a pig as that jean stood his ground a dollar i won't go back on it armidas berube with a disgusted look on his face awaited another bid but only got jokes and laughter meanwhile the women in their turn had begun to leave the church young or old pretty or ugly nearly all were well clad in fur cloaks or in coats of heavy cloth for honoring the sunday mass sole festival of their lives they had doffed coarse blouses and homespun petticoats and a stranger might well have stood amazed to find them habited almost with elegance in this remote spot still french to their finger-tips in the midst of the vast lonely forest and the snow and as tastefully dressed these peasant women as most of the middle-class folk in provincial france cleophas passant waited for louisa tremblay who was alone and they went off together along the wooden sidewalk in the direction of the house others were satisfied to exchange jocular remarks with the young girls as they passed in the easy and familiar fashion of the country natural enough too where the children have grown up together from infancy pete gaudreau looking toward the door of the church remarked maria chapdelaine is back from her visit to saint prime and there is her father come to fetch her many in the village scarcely knew the chapdelaines is it samuel chapdelaine who has a farm in the woods on the other side of the river above enfleur that's the man and the girl with him is his daughter maria yes she has been spending a month at saint prime with her mother's people they are bouchards related to wilfrid bouchard of saint gedeon interested glances were directed toward the top of the steps one of the young people paid maria the countryman's tribute of admiration a fine hearty girl said he right you are a fine hearty girl and one with plenty of spirit too a pity that she lives so far off in the woods how are the young fellows of the village to manage an evening at their place on the other side of the river and above the falls more than a dozen miles away and the last of them with next to no road the smiles were bold enough as they spoke of her this inaccessible beauty but as she came down the wooden steps with her father and passed near by they were taken with bashfulness and awkwardly drew back as though something more lay between her and them than the crossing of a river and twelve miles of indifferent woodland road little by little the groups before the church dissolved some returned to their houses after picking up all the news that was going 
others before departing were for spending an hour in one of the two gathering places of the village the cure's house or the general store those who came from the back concessions stretching along the very border of the forest one by one untied their horses from the row and brought their sleighs to the foot of the steps for their women and children samuel chapdelaine and maria had gone but a little way when a young man halted them good day to you mr chapdelaine good day miss maria i am in great luck at meeting you since your farm is so high up the river and i don't often come this way myself his bold eyes travelled from one to the other when he averted them it seemed by a conscious effort of politeness swiftly they returned and their glance bright keen full of honest eagerness was questioning and disconcerting francois paradis exclaimed chapdelaine this is indeed a bit of luck for i haven't seen you this long while francois and your father dead too have you held on to the farm the young man did not answer he was looking expectantly at maria with a frank smile awaiting a word from her you remember francois paradis of miss tassigny maria he has changed very little nor have you mr chapdelaine but your daughter that is a different story she is not the same yet i should have known her at once they had spent the last evening at saint michel de mistassigny viewing everything in the full light of the afternoon the great wooden bridge covered in and painted red not unlike an amazingly long noah's ark the high hills rising almost from the very banks of the river the old monastery crouched between the river and the heights the water that seethed and whitened flinging itself in wild descent down the staircase of a giant but to see this young man after seven years and to hear his name spoken aroused in maria memories clearer and more lively than she was able to evoke of the events and sights of yesterday francois paradis why surely father i remember francois paradis and francois content gave answer to the questions of a moment ago no mr chapdelaine i have not kept the farm when the good man died i sold everything and since then i have been nearly all the time in the woods trapping or bartering with the indians of lake mistassini and the riviere aux foin i also spent a couple of years in the labrador his look passed once more from samuel chapdelaine to maria and her eyes fell are you going home to-day he asked yes right after dinner i am glad that i saw you for i shall be passing up the river near your place in two or three weeks when the ice goes out i am here with some belgians who are going to buy furs from the indians we shall push up so soon as the river is clear and if we pitch a tent above the falls close to your farm i will spend the evening with you that is good francois we will expect you the alders formed a thick and unbroken hedge along the river Peribanca, but the leafless stems did not shut away the steeply sloping bank the levels of the frozen river the dark hem of the woods crowding to the farther edge leaving between the solitude of the great trees thick set and erect and the bare desolateness of the ice only room for a few narrow fields still for the most part uncouth with stumps so narrow indeed that they seemed to be constrained in the grasp of an unkindly land to maria chapdelaine glancing inattentively here and there there was nothing in all this to make one feel lonely or afraid never had she known other prospect from october to may save those still more depressing and sad farther yet from the dwellings of man and the marks of his labor and moreover all about her that morning had taken on a softer outline was brighter with a new promise by virtue of something sweet and gracious that the future had in its keeping perhaps the coming springtime perhaps another happiness that was stealing toward her nameless and unrecognized samuel chapdelaine and maria were to dine with their relative azalma larouche 
at whose house they had spent the night no one was there but the hostess for many years a widow and old nazaire larouche her brother-in-law azalma was a tall flat-chested woman with the undeveloped features of a child who talked very quickly and almost without taking breath while she made ready the meal in the kitchen from time to time she halted her preparations and sat down opposite her visitors less for the moment's repose than to give some special emphasis to what she was about to say but the washing of a dish or the setting of the table speedily claimed her attention again and the monologue went on amid the clatter of dishes and frying pans the pea-soup was soon ready and on the table while eating the two men talked about the condition of their farms and the state of the spring ice you should be safe enough for crossing this evening said nazaire larouche but it will be touch and go and i think you will be about the last the current is strong below the fall and already we have had three days of rain everybody says that the ice will hold for a long time yet replied his sister-in-law better sleep here again to-night and after supper the young folks from the village will drop in and spend the evening it is only fair that maria should have a little more amusement before you drag her off into your woods up there she has had plenty of gaiety at saint prime singing and games almost every night we are greatly obliged to you but i am going to put the horse in immediately after dinner so as to get home in good time old nazaire larouche spoke of the morning sermon which had struck him as well reasoned and fine then after a spell of silence he exclaimed abruptly have you baked his amazed sister-in-law gaped at him for a moment before it stole upon her that this was his way of asking for bread a little later he attacked her with another question is your pump working well which signified that there was no water on the table azalma rose to get it and behind her back the old fellow sent a sly wink in the direction of maria i assault her with parables chuckled he it's politer on the blank walls of the house were pasted old newspapers and calendars hung there such as the manufacturers of farm implements or grain merchants scatter abroad and also prints of a religious character a representation in crudest color and almost innocent of perspective of the basilica at saint anne de beaupre a likeness of pope pius x a chromo where the palely smiling virgin mary disclosed her bleeding heart and circled with a golden nimbus this is nicer than our house thought maria to herself nazaire larouche kept directing attention to his wants with dark sayings was your pig very lean he demanded or perhaps fond of maple sugar are you i never get enough of it and then azalma would help him to a second slice of pork or fetch the cake of maple sugar from the cupboard when she wearied of these strange table manners and bade him help himself in the usual fashion he smoothed her ruffled temper with good-humoured excuses quite right quite right i won't do it again but you always love the joke azalma when you have youngsters like me at dinner you must look for a little nonsense maria smiled to think how like he was to her father both tall and broad with grizzled hair their faces tanned to the color of leather and shining from their eyes the quenchless spirit of youth which keeps alive in the countryman of quebec his imperishable simple-heartedness they took the road almost as soon as the meal was over the snow thawed on top by the early rains and frozen anew during the cold nights gave an icy surface that slipped away easily beneath the runners the high blue hills on the other side of lake st john which closed the horizon behind them were gradually lost to view as they returned up the long bend of the river passing the church samuel chapdelaine said thoughtfully the mass is beautiful i am often very sorry that we live so far from churches perhaps not being able to attend to our religion every sunday hinders us from being just so fortunate as other people 
it is not our fault sighed maria we are too far away her father shook his head regretfully the imposing ceremonial the latin chants the lighted tapers the solemnity of the sunday mass never failed to fill him with exultation in a little he began to sing j'irai la voir un jour m'asseoir près de son trône recevoir ma couronne et renier à mon tour his voice was strong and true and he used the full volume of it singing with deep fervor but ere long his eyes began to close and his chin to drop toward his breast driving always made him sleepy and the horse aware that the usual drowsiness had possession of his master slackened his pace and at length fell to a walk get up there charles eugene he had suddenly waked and put his hand out for the whip charles eugene resigned himself and began to trot again many generations ago a chapelaine cherished a long feud with a neighbor who bore these names and had forthwith bestowed them upon an old tired lame horse of his that he might give himself the pleasure every day when passing the enemy's house of calling out very loudly charles eugene ill-favored beast that you are wretched badly brought up creature get along charles eugene for a whole century the quarrel was dead and buried but the chapdelaines ever since had named their successive horses charles eugene once again the hymn rose in clear ringing tones intense with feeling au ciel au ciel au ciel j'irai la voir un jour and again sleep was master the voice died away and maria gathered up the reins dropped from her father's hand the icy road held alongside the frozen river the houses on the other shore each surrounded with its patch of cleared land were sadly distant from one another behind the clearings and on either side of them to the river's bank it was always forest a dark green background of cypress against which a lonely birch tree stood out here and there its bowl naked and white as the column of a ruined temple on the other side of the road the strip of cleared land was continuous and broader the houses set closer together seemed an outpost of the village but ever behind the bare fields marched the forest following like a shadow a gloomy frieze without end between white ground and gray sky charles eugene get on there chapdelaine woke and made his usual good-humoured feint toward the whip but by the time the horse slowed down after a few livelier paces he had dropped off again his hands lying open upon his knees showing the worn palms of the horsehide mittens his chin resting upon the coat's thick fur after a couple of miles the road climbed a steep hill and entered the unbroken woods the houses standing at intervals in the flat country all the way from the village came abruptly to an end and there was no longer anything for the eye to rest upon but a wilderness of bare trunks rising out of the universal whiteness even the incessant dark green of balsam spruce and gray pine was rare the few young and living trees were lost among the endless dead either lying on the ground and buried in snow or still erect but stripped and blackened twenty years before great forest fires had swept through and the new growth was only pushing its way amid the standing skeletons and the charred down timber little hills followed one upon the other and the road was a succession of ups and downs scarcely more considerable than the slopes of an ocean swell from trough to crest from crest to trough maria chapdelaine drew the cloak about her slipped her hands under the warm robe of gray goatskin and half closed her eyes there was nothing to look at in the settlements new houses and barns might go up from year to year or be deserted and tumble into ruin but the life of the woods is so unhurried 
that one must needs have more than the patience of a human being to await and mark its advance alone of the three travellers the horse remained fully awake the sleigh glided over the hard snow grazing the stumps on either hand level with the track charles eugene accurately followed every turn of the road took the short pitches at a full trot and climbed the opposite hills with a leisurely pace like the capable animal he was who might be trusted to conduct his masters safely to the doorstep of their dwelling without being annoyed by guiding word or touch of rain some miles farther and the woods fell away again disclosing the river the road descended the last hill from the higher land and sank almost to the level of the ice three houses were dotted along the mile of bank above but they were humbler buildings than those of the village and behind them scarcely any land was cleared and there was little sign of cultivation built there they seemed to be only in witness of the presence of man charles eugene swung sharply to the right stiffened his forelegs to hold back on the slope and pulled up on the edge of the ice chapdelaine opened his eyes here father said maria take the reins he seized them but before giving his horse the word took some moments for a careful scrutiny of the frozen surface there is a little water on the ice said he and the snow has melted but we ought to be able to cross all the same get up charles Eugène. the horse lowered his head and sniffed at the white expanse in front of him then adventured upon it without more ado the ruts of the winter road were gone the little firs which had marked it at intervals were nearly all fallen and lying in the half-thawed snow as they passed the island the ice cracked twice without breaking charles eugene trotted smartly toward the house of charles lindsay on the other bank but when the sleigh reached midstream below the great fall the horse had perforce to slacken pace by reason of the water which had overflowed the ice and wetted the snow very slowly they approached the shore there remained only some thirty feet to be crossed when the ice began to go up and down under the horse's hoofs old chapdelaine fully awake now was on his feet his eyes beneath the fur cap shone with courage and quick resolve go on charles go on there he roared in his big voice the wise beast dug his calked shoes through the deep slush and sprang for the bank throwing himself into the collar at every leap just as they reached land a cake of ice tilted beneath their weight and sank leaving a space of open water samuel chapdelaine turned about we are the last to cross this year said he and he halted the horse to breathe before putting him at the hill after following the main road a little way they left it for another which plunged into the woods it was scarcely more than a rough trail still beset with roots turning and twisting in all directions to avoid boulders and stumps rising to a plateau where it wound back and forth through burnt lands it gave an occasional glimpse of steep hillside of the rocks piled in the channel of the frozen rapid the higher and precipitous opposing slope above the fall and at the last resumed a desolate way amid fallen trees and blackened rampikes the little stony hillocks they passed through seemed to close in behind them the burnt lands gave place to darkly crowding spruces and firs now and then they caught momentary sight of the distant mountains on the riviere alec and soon the travellers discerned a clearing in the forest a mounting column of smoke the bark of a dog they will be glad to see you again maria said her father they have been lonesome for you every one of them end of chapter one chapter two of maria chapdelaine by louis Aymon. Translated by W. H. Blake. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Bruce Peary. Home in the Clearing. 
it was supper-time before maria had answered all the questions told of her journey down to the last and littlest item and given not only the news of saint prime and peribonka but everything else she had been able to gather up upon the road tibet seated facing his sister smoked pipe after pipe without taking his eyes off her for a single moment fearful of missing some highly important disclosure that she had hitherto held back little alma rose stood with an arm about her neck telesphor was listening too as he mended his dog's harness with bits of string madame chapdelaine stirred the fire in the big cast-iron stove came and went brought from the cupboard plates and dishes the loaf of bread and pitcher of milk tilted the great molasses jar over a glass jug not seldom she stopped to ask maria something or to catch what she was saying and stood for a few moments dreaming hands on her hips as the villages spoken of rose before her in memory and so the church is finished a beautiful stone church with pictures on the walls and colored glass in the windows how splendid that must be johnny bouchard built a new barn last year and it is a little perron daughter of abelard perron of saint jerome who teaches school eight years since i was at saint prime just to think of it a fine parish indeed that would have suited me nicely good level land as far as you can see no rock cropping up and no bush everywhere square cornered fields with handsome straight fences and heavy soil only two hours drive to the railway perhaps it is wicked of me to say so but all my married life i have felt sorry that your father's taste was for moving and pushing on and on into the woods and not for living on a farm in one of the old parishes through the little square window she threw a melancholy glance over the scanty cleared fields behind the house the barn built of ill-joined planks that showed marks of fire and the land beyond still covered with stumps and encompassed by the forest whence any return of hay or grain could only be looked for at the end of long and patient waiting oh look said alma rose here is chien come for his share of petting the dog laid his long head with the sad eyes upon her knee uttering little friendly words maria bent and caressed him he has been lonely without you like the rest of us came from alma rose every morning he used to look at your bed to see if you were not back she called him to her come chien come and let me pet you too chien went obediently from one to the other half closing his eyes at each pat maria looked about her to see if some change unlikely though that might be had taken place while she was away the great three-decked stove stood in the centre of the house the sheet-iron stove-pipe after mounting for some feet turned at a right angle and was carried through the house to the outside so that none of the precious warmth should be lost in a corner was the large wooden cupboard close by the table a bench against the wall on the other side of the door the sink and the pump a partition beginning at the opposite wall seemed designed to divide the house in two but it stopped before reaching the stove and did not begin again beyond it in such fashion that these divisions of the only room were each enclosed on three sides and looked like a stage setting that conventional type of scene where the audience are invited to imagine that two distinct apartments exist although they look into both at once in one of these compartments the father and mother had their bed maria and alma rose in the other a steep stairway ascended from a corner to the loft where the boys slept in the summer time with the coming of winter they moved their bed down and enjoyed the warmth of the stove with the rest of the family hanging upon the wall were the illustrated calendars of shopkeepers in robberval and chicoutimi a picture of the infant jesus in his mother's arms a rosy-faced jesus with great blue eyes holding out his chubby hands a representation of some unidentified saint looking rapturously heavenward the first page of the christmas number of a quebec newspaper filled with stars big as moons and angels flying with folded wings were you a good girl while i was away alma rose it was the mother who replied 
alma rose was not too naughty but telesphore has been a perfect torment to me it is not so much that he does what is wrong but the things he says one might suppose that the boy had not all his wits telesphore busied himself with the dog harness and made believe not to hear young telesphore's depravities supplied this household with its only domestic tragedy to satisfy her own mind and give him a proper conviction of besetting sin his mother had fashioned for herself a most involved kind of polytheism had peopled the world with evil spirits and good who influenced him alternately to err or to repent the boy had come to regard himself as a mere battleground where devils who were very sly and angels of excellent purpose but little experience waged endless unequal warfare gloomily would he mutter before the empty preserve jar it was the demon of gluttony who tempted me returning from some escapade with torn and muddy clothes he would anticipate reproach with his explanation the demon of disobedience lured me into that beyond doubt it was he with the same breath asserting indignation at being so misled and protesting the blamelessness of his intentions but he must not be allowed to come back eh mother he must not be allowed to come back this bad spirit i will take father's gun and i will shoot him you cannot shoot devils with a gun objected his mother but when you feel the temptation coming seize your rosary and say your prayers telesphore did not dare to gainsay this but he shook his head doubtfully the gun seemed to him both the surer and the more amusing way and he was accustomed to picture to himself a tremendous duel a lingering slaughter from which he would emerge without spot or blemish forever set free from the wiles of the evil one samuel chapdelaine came into the house and supper was served the sign of the cross around the table lips moving in a silent benedicite which telesphore and alma rose repeated aloud again the sign of the cross the noise of chairs and bench drawn in spoons clattering on plates to maria it was as though since her absence she was giving attention for the first time in her life to these sounds and movements that they possessed a different significance from movements and sounds elsewhere and invested with some peculiar quality of sweetness and peace all that happened in that house far off in the woods supper was nearly at an end when a footstep sounded without chien pricked up his ears but gave no growl a visitor announced mother chapdelaine eutrope gagnon has come over to see us it was an easy guess as eutrope gagnon was their only neighbor the year before he had taken up land two miles away with his brother the brother had gone to the shanties for the winter and he was left alone in the cabin they had built of charred logs he appeared on the threshold lantern in hand greetings to each and all was the salutation as he pulled off his woolen cap a fine night and there is still a crust on the snow as the walking was good i thought that i would drop in this evening to find out if you were back although he came to see maria as all knew it was to the father of the house that he directed his remarks partly through shyness partly out of deference to the manners of the country he took the chair that was offered him the weather is mild if it misses turning wet it will be by very little one can feel that the spring rains are not far off it was the orthodox beginning to one of those talks among country folk which are like an interminable song full of repetitions each speaker agreeing with the words last uttered and adding more to the same effect and naturally the theme was the canadian's never-ending plaint his protest falling short of actual revolt against the heavy burden of the long winter the beasts have been in the stable since the end of october and the barn is just about empty said mother chapdelaine unless spring comes soon i don't know what we are going to do three weeks at least before they can be turned out to pasture 
a horse three cows a pig and the sheep without speaking of the fowls it takes something to feed them this from tibe with an air of grown-up wisdom he smoked and talked with the men now by virtue of his fourteen years his broad shoulders and his knowledge of husbandry eight years ago he had begun to care for the stock and to replenish the store of wood for the house with the aid of his little sled somewhat later he had learned to call ul ul very loudly behind the thin flanked cows and ou dia arie when the horses were ploughing to manage a hay-fork and to build a rail fence these two years he had taken turn beside his father with axe and scythe driven the big wood sleigh over the hard snow sown and reaped on his own responsibility and thus it was that no one disputed his right freely to express an opinion and to smoke incessantly the strong leaf tobacco his face was still smooth as a child's with immature features and guileless eyes and one not knowing him would probably have been surprised to hear him speak with all the deliberation of an older and experienced man and to see him everlastingly charging his wooden pipe but in the province of quebec the boys are looked upon as men when they undertake men's work and as to their precocity in smoking there is always the excellent excuse that it affords some protection in summer against the attacking swarms of black flies mosquitoes and sand flies how nice it would be to live in a country where there is hardly any winter and where the earth makes provision for man and beast up here man himself by dint of work must care for his animals and his land if we did not have estras and dabe earning good wages in the woods how could we get along but the soil is rich in these parts said eutrope gagnon the soil is good but one must battle for it with the forest and to live at all you must watch every copper labor from morning to night and do everything yourself because there is no one near to lend a hand mother chapdelaine ended with a sigh her thoughts were ever fondly revisiting the older parishes where the land has long been cleared and cultivated and where the houses are neighborly her lost paradise her husband clenched his fists and shook his head with an obstinate gesture only you wait a few months when the boys are back from the woods we shall set to work they too tibe and i and presently we shall have our land cleared with four good men axe in hand and not afraid of work things will go quickly even in the hard timber two years from now there will be grain harvested and pasturage that will support a good herd of cattle i tell you that we are going to make land make land rude phrase of the country summing up in two words all the heart-breaking labor that transforms the incult woods barren of sustenance to smiling fields ploughed and sown samuel chapdelaine's eyes flamed with enthusiasm and determination as he spoke for this was the passion of his life the passion of a man whose soul was in the clearing not the tilling of the earth five times since boyhood had he taken up wild land built a house a stable and a barn rested from the unbroken forest a comfortable farm and five times he had sold out to begin it all again farther north suddenly losing interest energy and ambition vanishing once the first rough work was done when neighbors appeared and the countryside began to be opened up and inhabited some there were who entered into his feelings others praised the courage but thought little of the wisdom and such were fond of saying that if good sense had led him to stay in one place he and his would now be at their ease at their ease o oh, dread god of the scriptures worshipped by these country folk of quebec without a quibble or a doubt who hast condemned man to earn his bread in the sweat of his face canst thou for a moment smooth the awful frown from thy forehead when thou art told that certain of these thy creatures have escaped the doom and live at their ease 
at their ease truly to know what it means one must have toiled bitterly from dawn to dark with back and hands and feet and the children of the soil are those who have best attained the knowledge it means the burden lifted the heavy burden of labor and of care it means leave to rest the which even if it be unused is a new mercy every moment to the old it means so much of the pride of life as no one would deny them the late revelation of unknown delights an hour of idleness a distant journey a dainty or a purchase indulged in without anxious thought the hundred and one things desirable that a competence assures so constituted is the heart of man that most of those who have paid the ransom and won liberty ease have in the winning of it created their own incapacity for enjoying the conquest and toil on till death it is the others the ill-endowed or the unlucky who have been unable to overcome fortune and escape their slavery to whom the state of ease has all those charms of the inaccessible it may be that the chapelains so were thinking and each in his own fashion the father with the unconquerable optimism of a man who knows himself strong and believes himself wise the mother with a gentle resignation the others the younger ones in a less definite way and without bitterness seeing before them a long life in which they could not miss attaining happiness maria stole an occasional glance at eutrope gagnon but she quickly turned away for she always surprised his humbly worshipping eyes for a year she had become used to his frequent visits nor felt displeasure when every sunday evening added to the family circle this brown face that was continually so patient and good-humoured but the short absence of a month had not left things the same for she had brought home to the fireside an undefined feeling that a page of her life was turned in which he would have no share the ordinary subjects of conversation exhausted they played cards quatre set and boeuf then eutrope looked at his big silver watch and said that it was time to be going his lantern lit the good-byes said he halted on the threshold for a moment to observe the night it is raining he exclaimed his hosts made toward the door to see for themselves the rain had in truth begun a spring rain with great drops that fell heavily under which the snow was already softening and melting the sou'east has taken hold announced the elder chapelaine now we can say that the winter is practically over every one had his own way of expressing relief and delight but it was maria who stood longest by the door hearkening to the sweet patter of the rain watching the indistinct movement of cloud in the dark sky above the darker mass of the forest breathing the mild air that came from the south spring is not far spring is not far in her heart she felt that never since the earth began was there a springtime like this springtime to be End of chapter two Chapter three of Maria Chapelaine by Louis Aymon, translated by W. H. Blake. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Bruce Peary. Francois passes by. One morning, three days later, on opening the door, Maria's ear caught a sound that made her stand motionless and listening. The distant and continuous thunder was the voice of wild waters silenced all winter by the frost the ice is going out she announced to those within you can hear the falls this set them all talking once again of the opening season and of the work soon to be commenced the month of may came in with alternate warm rains and fine sunny days which gradually conquered the accumulated ice and snow of the long winter low stumps and roots were beginning to appear 
although the shade of close-set cypress and fir prolonged the death struggle of the perishing snowdrifts the roads became quagmires wherever the brown mosses were uncovered they were full of water as a sponge in other lands it was already spring vigorously the sap was running buds were bursting and presently leaves would unfold but the soil of far northern canada must be rid of one chill and heavy mantle before clothing itself afresh in green a dozen times in the course of the day maria and her mother opened the window to feel the softness of the air listen to the tinkle of water running from the last drifts on higher slopes or hearken to the mighty roar telling that the exulting Parabanco was free and hurrying to the lake a freight of ice flows from the remote north chapdelaine seated himself that evening on the doorstep for his smoke a stirring of memory brought the remark francois will soon be passing he said that perhaps he would come to see us maria replied with a scarce audible yes and blessed the shadow hiding her face ten days later he came long after nightfall the women were alone in the house with tibet and the children the father having gone for seed grain to honfleur whence he would only return on the morrow telesphore and alma rose were asleep tibet was having a last pipe before the family prayer when chien barked several times and got up to sniff at the closed door then two light taps were heard the visitor waited for the invitation before he entered and stood before them his excuses for so late a call were made without touch of awkwardness we are camped at the end of the portage above the rapids the tent had to be pitched and things put in order to make the belgians comfortable for the night when i set out i knew it was hardly the hour for a call and that the paths through the woods must be pretty bad but i started all the same and when i saw your light his high indian boots were caked with mud to the knee he breathed a little deeply between words like a man who has been running but his keen eyes were quietly confident only tibet has changed said he when you left mistassini he was but so high with a hand he indicated the stature of a child mother chapdelaine's face was bright with interest doubly pleased to receive a visitor and at the chance of talking about old times nor have you altered in these seven years not a bit as for maria surely you find a difference he gazed at maria with something of wonder in his eyes you see that that i saw her the other day at peribanca tone and manner showed that the meeting of a fortnight ago had been allowed to blot the remoter days from his recollection but since the talk was of her he ventured an appraising glance her young vigor and health the beautiful heavy hair and sunburnt neck of a country girl the frank honesty of eye and gesture all these things thought he were possessions of the child of seven years ago and twice or thrice he shook his head as though to say that in truth she had not changed but the consciousness too was there that he if not she had changed for the sight of her before him took strange hold upon his heart maria's smile was a little timid but soon she dared to raise her eyes and look at him in turn assuredly a handsome fellow comely of body revealing so much of supple strength comely of face in well-cut feature and fearless eye to herself she said with some surprise that she had not thought him thus more forward perhaps talking freely and rather positively but now he scarcely spoke at all and everything about him had an air of perfect simplicity doubtless it was his expression that had given her this idea and his bold straightforward manner mother chapdelaine took up her questioning and so you sold the farm when your father died yes i sold everything i was never a very good hand at farming you know working in the shanties trapping making a little money from time to time as a guide or in trade with the indians that is the life for me 
but to scratch away at the same fields from one year's end to another and stay there for ever i would not have been able to stick to that all my life i would have felt like a cow tethered to a stake that is so some men are made that way samuel for example and you and many another it seems as if the woods had some magic for you she shook her head and looked at him in wonderment frozen in winter devoured by flies in summer living in a tent on the snow or in a log cabin full of chinks that the wind blows through you like that better than spending your life on a good farm near shops and houses just think of it a nice bit of level land without a stump or a hollow a good warm house all papered inside fat cattle pasturing or in the stable for people well stocked with implements and who keep their health could there be anything better or happier paradis looked at the floor without making answer perhaps a trifle ashamed of these wrong-headed tastes of his a fine life for those who are fond of the land he said at last but i should never have been content it was the everlasting conflict between the types pioneer and farmer the peasant from france who brought to new lands his ideals of ordered life and contented immobility and that other in whom the vast wilderness awakened distant atavistic instincts for wandering and adventure accustomed for fifteen years to hear her mother vaunting the idyllic happiness of the farmer in the older settlements maria had very naturally come to believe that she was of the same mind now she was no longer certain about it but whoever was right she well knew that not one of the well-to-do young fellows at st prime with his sunday coat of fine cloth and his fur collar was the equal of paradis in muddy boots and faded woolen jersey replying to further questions he spoke of his journeys on the north shore and to the headwaters of the rivers of it all very naturally and with a shade of hesitation scarcely knowing what to tell and what to leave out for the people he was speaking to lived in much the same kind of country and their manner of life was little different up there the winters are harder yet than here and still longer we have only dogs to draw our sleds fine strong dogs but bad-tempered and often half wild and we feed them but once a day in the evening on frozen fish yes there are settlements but almost no farming the men live by trapping and fishing no i never had any difficulty with the indians i always got on very well with them i know nearly all those on the mistassini and this river for they used to come to our place before my father died you see he often went trapping in winter when he was not in the shanties and one season when he was at the head of the riviere aux foin quite alone a tree that he was cutting for firewood slipped in falling and it was the indians who found him by chance next day crushed and half frozen though the weather was mild he was in their game preserve and they might very well have pretended not to see him and have left him to die there but they put him on their toboggan brought him to their camp and looked after him you knew my father a rough man who often took a glass but just in his dealings and with a good name for doing that sort of thing himself so when he parted with these indians he told them to stop and see him in the spring when they would be coming down to pointe bleu with their furs francois paradis of mistassini said he to them will not forget what you have done francois paradis and when they came in spring while running the river he looked after them well and every one carried away a new axe a fine woolen blanket and tobacco for six months always after that they used to pay us a visit in the spring and father had the pick of their best skins for less than the company's buyers had to pay when he died they treated me in the same way because i was his son and bore the same name francois paradis with more capital i could have made a good bit of money in this trade a good bit of money he seemed a little uncomfortable at having talked so much and arose to go 
we shall be coming down in a few weeks and i will try to stay a little longer he said as he departed it is good to see you again on the doorstep his keen eyes sought in maria's for something that he might carry into the depths of the green woods whither he was bent but they found no message in her maidenly simplicity she feared to show herself too bold and very resolutely she kept her glance lowered like the young girls with richer parents who returned from the convents in shakutimi trained to look on the world with a superhuman demureness scarcely was francois gone when the two women and tibet knelt for the evening prayer the mother led in a high voice speaking very rapidly the others answering in a low murmur five potters five aves the acts and then a long responsive litany holy mother mary of god pray for us now and at the hour of our death immaculate heart of jesus have pity on us the window was open and through it came the distant roaring of the falls the first mosquitoes of the spring attracted by the light entered likewise and the slender music of their wings filled the house tibet went and closed the window then fell on his knees again beside the others great saint joseph pray for us saint isidore pray for us the prayers over mother chapdelaine sighed out contentedly how pleasant it is to have a caller when we see hardly any one but to trop gagnon from year's end to year's end but that is what comes of living so far away in the woods now when i was a girl at saint judillon the house was full of visitors nearly every saturday evening and all sunday adelard saint ange who courted me for such a long time wilfred tremblay the merchant who had nice manners and was always trying to speak as the french do many others as well not counting your father who came to see us almost every night for three years while i was making up my mind three years maria thought to herself that she had only seen francois paradis twice since she was a child and she felt ashamed at the beating of her heart End of chapter 3chapter four of maria chapdelaine by louis Aymon, translated by w h blake this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by bruce peary wild land after a few chilly days june suddenly brought veritable spring weather a blazing sun warmed field and forest the lingering patches of snow vanished even in the deep shade of the woods the peribonka rose and rose between its rocky banks until the alders and the roots of the nearer spruces were drowned in the roads the mud was incredibly deep the canadian soil rid itself of the last traces of winter with a semblance of mad haste as though in dread of another winter already on the way estras and dabe returned from the shanties where they had worked all the winter estras was the eldest of the family a tall fellow with a huge frame his face bronzed his hair black the low forehead and prominent chin gave him a neuronian profile domineering not without a suggestion of brutality but he spoke softly measuring his words and was endlessly patient in face alone had he anything of the tyrant it was as though the long rigors of the climate and the fine sense and good humor of the race had refined his heart to a simplicity and kindliness that his formidable aspect seemed to deny dabe also tall was less heavily built and more lively and merry he was like his father the married couple had given their first children estras and maria fine high-sounding sonorous names but they had apparently wearied of these solemnities for the next two children never heard their real names pronounced always had they been called by the affectionate diminutives of childhood babe and tibe with the last pair however there had been a return to the earlier ceremonious manner telesphore alma rose when the boys get back we are going to make land 
the father had promised and with the help of edwige legare their hired man they set about the task in the province of quebec there is much uncertainty in the spelling and the use of names a scattered people in a huge half-wild country unlettered for the most part and with no one to turn to for counsel but the priests is apt to pay attention only to the sound of names caring nothing about their appearance when written or the sex to which they pertain pronunciation has naturally varied in one mouth or another in this family or that and when a formal occasion calls for writing each takes leave to spell his baptismal name in his own way without a passing thought that there may be a canonical form borrowings from other languages have added to the uncertainties of orthography and gender individuals sign indifferently denise denige or deneige conrad or courad men bear such names as hermenegilde aglae edwige edwige legare had worked for the chapdelaines these eleven summers that is to say for wages of twenty dollars a month he was in harness each day from four in the morning till nine at night at any and every job that called for doing bringing to it a sort of frenzied and inexhaustible enthusiasm for he was one of those men incapable by his nature of working save at the full pitch of strength and energy in a series of berserk rages short and broad his eyes were the brightest blue a thing rare in quebec at once piercing and guileless set in a visage the color of clay that always showed cruel traces of the razor topped by hair of nearly the same shade with a pride in his appearance that was hard to justify he shaved himself two or three times a week always in the evening before the bit of looking-glass that hung over the pump and by the feeble light of the little lamp driving the steel through his stiff beard with groans that showed what it cost him in labor and anguish clad in shirt and trousers of brownish homespun wearing huge dusty boots he was from head to heel of a piece with the soil nor was there aught in his face to redeem the impression of rustic uncouthness chapdelaine his three sons and man proceeded then to make land the forest still pressed hard upon the buildings they had put up a few years earlier the little square house the barn of planks that gaped apart the stable built of blackened logs and chinked with rags and earth between the scanty fields of their clearing and the darkly encircling woods lay a broad stretch which the axe had but half-heartedly attacked a few living trees had been cut for timber and the dead ones sawn and split fed the great stove for a whole winter but the place was a rough tangle of stumps and interlacing roots of fallen trees too far rotted to burn of others dead but still erect amid the alder scrub thither the five men made their way one morning and set to work at once without a word for every man's task had been settled beforehand the father and dabbe took their stand face to face on either side of a tree and their axes helved with birch began to swing in rhythm at first each hewed a deep notch chopping steadily at the same spot for some seconds then the axe rose swiftly and fell obliquely on the trunk a foot higher up at every stroke a great chip flew thick as the hand splitting away with the grain when the cuts were nearly meeting one stopped and the other slowed down leaving his axe in the wood for a moment at every blow the mere strip by some miracle still holding the tree erect yielded at last the trunk began to lean and the two axemen stepped back a pace and watched it fall shouting at the same instant a warning of the danger it was then the turn of edwige legare and estras when the tree was not too heavy each took an end clasping their strong hands beneath the trunk and then raised themselves backs straining arms cracking under the stress and carried it to the nearest heap with short unsteady steps getting over the fallen timber with stumbling effort when the burden seemed too heavy tibet came forward leading charles eugene dragging a tug-bar with a strong chain this was passed round the trunk and fastened 
the horse bent his back and with the muscles of his hindquarters standing out hauled away the tree which scraped along the stumps and crushed the young alders to the ground at noon maria came out to the doorstep and gave a long call to tell them that dinner was ready slowly they straightened up among the stumps wiping away with the backs of their hands the drops of sweat that ran into their eyes and made their way to the house already the pea soup smoked in the plates the five men set themselves at table without haste as if sensation were somewhat dulled by the heavy work but as they caught their breath a great hunger awoke and soon they began to eat with keen appetite the two women waited upon them filling the empty plates carrying about the great dish of pork and boiled potatoes pouring out the hot tea when the meat had vanished the diners filled their saucers with molasses in which they soaked large pieces of bread hunger was quickly appeased because they had eaten fast and without a word and then plates were pushed back and chairs tilted with sighs of satisfaction while hands were thrust into pockets for their pipes and the pigs bladders bulging with tobacco edouige legare seating himself on the doorstep proclaimed two or three times i have dined well i have dined well with the air of a judge who renders an impartial decision after which he leaned against the post and let the smoke of his pipe and the gaze of his small light-coloured eyes pursue the same purposeless wanderings the elder chapdelaine sank deeper and deeper into his chair and ended by falling asleep the others smoked and chatted about their work if there is anything said the mother which could reconcile me to living so far away in the woods it is seeing my men-folk make a nice bit of land a nice bit of land that was all trees and stumps and roots which one beholds in a fortnight as bare as the back of your hand ready for the plough surely nothing in the world can be more pleasing or better worth doing the rest gave assent with nods and were silent for a while admiring the picture soon however chapdelaine awoke refreshed by his sleep and ready for work then all arose and went out together the place where they had worked in the morning was yet full of stumps and overgrown with alders they set themselves to cutting and uprooting the alders gathering a sheaf of branches in the hand and severing them with the axe or sometimes digging the earth away about the roots and tearing up the whole bush together the alders disposed of there remained the stumps legare and estras attacked the smaller ones with no weapons but their axes and stout wooden prizes they first cut the roots spreading on the surface then drove a lever well home and chests against the bar threw all their weight upon it when their efforts could not break the hundred ties binding the tree to the soil legare continued to bear heavily that he might raise the stump a little and while he groaned and grunted under the strain estras hewed away furiously level with the ground severing one by one the remaining roots a little distance away the other three men handled the stumping machine with the aid of charles eugene the pyramidal scaffolding was put in place above a large stump and lowered the chains which were then attached to the root passed over a pulley and the horse at the other end started away quickly flinging himself against the traces and showering earth with his hoofs a short and desperate charge a mad leap often arrested after a few feet as by the stroke of a giant fist then the heavy blades would swing up anew gleaming in the sun and fall with a dull sound upon the stubborn wood while the horse took breath for a moment awaiting with excited eye the word which would launch him forward again and afterwards there was still the labour of hauling or rolling the big stumps to the pile at fresh effort of back of soil-stained hands with swollen veins and stiffened arms that seemed grotesquely striving with the heavy trunk and the huge twisted roots the sun dipped toward the horizon disappeared the sky took on softer hues above the forest's dark edge and the hour of supper brought to the house five men of the colour of the soil 
while waiting upon them madame chapdelaine asked a hundred questions about the day's work and when the vision arose before her of this patch of land they had cleared superbly bare lying ready for the plough her spirit was possessed with something of a mystic's rapture with hands upon her hips refusing to seat herself at table she extolled the beauty of the world as it existed for her not the beauty wherein human beings have no hand which the townsman makes such an ado about with his unreal ecstasies mountains lofty and bare wild seas but the quiet unaffected loveliness of the level champagne finding its charm in the regularity of the long furrow and the sweetly flowing stream the naked champagne courting with willing abandon the fervent embraces of the sun she sang the great deeds of the four chapdelaines and edwige les garay their struggle against the savagery of nature their triumph of the day she awarded praises and displayed her own proper pride albeit the five men smoked their wooden or clay pipes in silence motionless as images after their long task images of earthly hue hollow-eyed with fatigue the stumps are hard to get out at length said the elder chapdelaine the roots have not rotted in the earth so much as i should have imagined i calculate that we shall not be through for three weeks he glanced questioningly at les Garay, who gravely confirmed him three weeks yes confound it that is what i think too they fell silent again patient and determined like men who face a long war the canadian spring had but known a few weeks of life when by calendar the summer was already come it seemed as if the local weather god had incontinently pushed the season forward with a gust finger to bring it again into accord with more favored lands to the south for torrid heat fell suddenly upon them heat well nigh as unmeasured as was the winter's cold the tops of the spruces and cypresses forgotten by the wind were utterly still and above the frowning outline stretched a sky bare of cloud which likewise seemed fixed and motionless from dawn till nightfall a merciless sun calcined the ground the five men worked on unceasingly while from day to day the clearing extended its borders by a little deep wounds in the uncovered soil showed the richness of it maria went forth one morning to carry them water the father and Tibet were cutting alders, Dabé and Estras piled the cut trees. Edwige Légaré was attacking a stump by himself, a hand against the trunk, he had grasped a root with the other as one seizes the leg of some gigantic adversary in a struggle, and he was fighting the combined forces of wood and earth like a man furious at the resistance of an enemy. Suddenly the stump yielded and lay upon the ground he passed a hand over his forehead and sat down upon a root running with sweat overcome by the exertion when maria came near him with her pail half full of water the others having drunk he was still seated breathing deeply and saying in a bewildered way i am done for ah i am done for but he pulled himself together on seeing her and roared out cold water perdition give me cold water seizing the bucket he drank half its contents and poured the rest over his head and neck still dripping he threw himself afresh upon the vanquished stump and began to roll it toward a pile as one carries off a prize maria stayed for a few moments looking at the work of the men and the progress they had made each day more evident then hied her back to the house swinging the empty bucket happy to feel herself alive and well under the bright sun dreaming of all the joys that were to be hers nor could be long delayed if only she were earnest and patient enough in her prayers even at a distance the voices of the men came to her across the surface of the ground baked by the heat estras his hands beneath a young jack pine was saying in his quiet tones gently together now Ligaret was wrestling with some new inert foe and swearing in his half-stifled way perdition i'll make you stir so i will 
his gasps were nearly as audible as the words taking breath for a second he rushed once more into the fray arms straining wrenching with his great back and yet again his voice was raised in oaths and lamentations i tell you that i'll have you oh you rascal isn't it hot i'm pretty nearly finished his complaints ripened into one mighty cry boss we are going to kill ourselves making land old chapdelaine's voice was husky but still cheerful as he answered tough edwige tough the pea-soup will soon be ready and in truth it was not long before maria once more on the doorstep shaping her hands to carry the sound sent forth the ringing call to dinner toward evening a breeze arose and a delicious coolness fell upon the earth like a pardon but the sky remained cloudless if the fine weather lasts said mother chapdelaine the blueberries will be ripe for the feast of saint anne End of chapter 4chapter five of maria chapdelaine by louis aimon translated by w h blake this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by bruce peary the vows the fine weather continued and early in july the blueberries were ripe where the fire had passed on rocky slopes wherever the woods were thin and the sun could penetrate the ground had been clad in almost unbroken pink by the laurels myriad tufts of bloom at first the reddening blueberries contended with them in glowing color but under the constant sun these slowly turned to pale blue to royal blue to deepest purple and when july brought the feast of st anne the bushes laden with fruit were broad patches of violet amid the rosy masses now beginning to fade the forests of quebec are rich in wild berries cranberries indian pears black currants sarsaparilla spring up freely in the wake of the great fires but the blueberry the bilberry or whortleberry of france is of all the most abundant and delicious the gathering of them from july to september is an industry for many families who spend the whole day in the woods strings of children down to the tiniest go swinging their tin pails empty in the morning full and heavy by evening others only gather the blueberries for their own use either to make jam or the famous pies national to french canada two or three times in the very beginning of july maria with telesphor and alma rose went to pick blueberries but their day had not come and the gleanings barely sufficed for a few tarts of proportions to excite a smile on the feast of st anne said their mother by way of consolation we shall all go a-gathering the men as well and whoever fails to bring back a full pail is not to have any but saturday the eve of st anne's day was memorable to the chapdelaines an evening of company such as their house in the forest had never seen when the men returned from work eutrope gagnon was already there he had supped he said and while the others were at their meal he sat by the door in the cooler air that entered balancing his chair on two legs the pipes going talk naturally turned toward the labors of the soil and the care of stock with five men said eutrope you have a good bit of land to show in a short while but working alone as i do without a horse to draw the heavy logs one makes poor headway and has a hard time of it however you are always getting on getting on madame chapdelaine liking him and feeling a great sympathy for his solitary labor in this worthy cause gave him a few words of encouragement you don't make very quick progress by yourself that is true enough but a man lives on very little when he is alone and then your brother egide will be coming back from the drive with two or three hundred dollars at least in time for the haymaking and the harvest and if you both stay here next winter in less than two years you will have a good farm assenting with a nod his glance found maria as though drawn thither by the thought that in two years fortune favoring he might hope 
how does the drive go asked estras is there any news from that quarter i had word through ferdinand larouche a son of Tadé larouche of Enfler, who got back from la touque last month he said that things were going well the men were not having too bad a time the shanties the drive these are the two chief heads of the great lumbering industry even of greater importance for the province of quebec than is farming from october till april the axes never cease falling while sturdy horses draw the logs over the snow to the banks of the frozen rivers and when spring comes the piles melt one after another into the rising waters and begin their long adventurous journey through the rapids at every abrupt turn at every fall where logs jam and pile must be found the strong and nimble river drivers practised at the dangerous work at making their way across the floating timber breaking the jams aiding with axe and pike-pole the free descent of this moving forest a hard time exclaimed legare with scorn the young fellows of to-day don't know the meaning of the words after three months in the woods they are in a hurry to get home and buy yellow boots stiff hats and cigarettes and to go and see their girls even in the shanties as things are now they are as well fed as in a hotel with meat and potatoes all winter long now thirty years ago he broke off for a moment expressing with a shake of his head those prodigious changes that the years had wrought thirty years ago when the railway from quebec was built i was there that was something like hardship i can tell you i was only sixteen years of age but i chopped with the rest of them to clear the right of way always twenty-five miles ahead of the steel and for fourteen months i never clapped eye on a house we had no tents summer or winter only shelters of boughs that we made for ourselves and from morning till night it was chop 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 eaten by the flies and in the course of the same day soaked with rain and roasted by the sun every monday morning they opened a sack of flour and we made ourselves a bucketful of pancakes and all the rest of the week three times a day one dug into that pail for something to eat by wednesday no longer any pancakes because they were all stuck together nothing there but a mass of dough one cut off a big chunk of dough with one's knife put that in his belly and then chopped and chopped again when we got to shakutami where provisions could reach us by water we were worse off than indians pretty nearly naked all scratched and torn and i well remember some who began to cry when told they could go home because they thought they would find all their people dead so long had the time seemed to them hardship that was hardship if you like that is so said chapdelaine i can recall those days not a single house on the north side of the lake no one but indians and a few trappers who made their way up here in summer by canoe and in winter with dog sleds much as it is now in the labrador the young folk were listening keenly to these tales of former times and now said estras here we are fifteen miles beyond the lake and when the robberval boat is running we can get to the railway in twelve hours they meditated upon this for a while without a word contrasting past and present the cruel harshness of life as once it was the easy day's journey now separating them from the marvels of the iron way and the thought of it filled them with naive wonder all at once chien set up a low growl the sound was heard of approaching footsteps another visitor madame chapdelaine announced in a tone mingling pleasure and astonishment maria also arose agitated smoothing her hair with unconscious hand but it was ephraim surprenant of Enfler who opened the door we have come to pay you a visit he shouted this with the air of one who announces a great piece of news behind him was some one unknown to them who bowed and smiled in a very mannerly way my nephew lorenzo was ephraim surprenant's introduction a son of my brother elzear who died last autumn you never met him it is a long time since he left this country for the states 
they were quick to find a chair for the young man from the states and the uncle undertook the duty of establishing the nephew's genealogy on both sides of the house and of setting forth his age trade and the particulars of his life in obedience to the canadian custom yes a son of my brother elzear who married a young burglui of kiskasink you should be able to recall that madame chapdelaine from the depths of her memory mother chapdelaine unearthed a number of surprenants and as many burglui and gave the list with their baptismal names successive places of residence and a full record of their alliances right precisely right well this one here is lorenzo he has been in the states for many years working in a factory frankly interested everyone took another good look at lorenzo surprenant his face was rounded with well-cut features eyes gentle and unwavering hands white with his head a little on one side he smiled amiably neither superior nor embarrassed under this concentrated gaze he came here continued his uncle to settle affairs after the death of elzear and to try to sell the farm he has no wish to hold on to the land and cultivate it questioned the elder chapelaine lorenzo surprenant's smile broadened and he shook his head no the idea of settling down on the farm does not tempt me not in the least i earn good wages where i am and like the place very well i am used to the work he checked himself but it was plain that after the kind of life he had been living and what he had seen of the world existence on a farm between a humble little village and the forest seemed a thing insupportable when i was a girl said mother chapdelaine pretty nearly every one went off to the states farming did not pay as well as it does now prices were low we were always hearing of the big wages earned over there in the factories and every year one family after another sold out for next to nothing and left canada some made a lot of money no doubt of that especially those families with plenty of daughters but now it is different and they are not going as once they did so you are selling the farm yes there has been some talk with three frenchmen who came to mistook last month i expect we shall make a bargain and are there many canadians where you are living do the people speak french at the place i went to first in the state of maine there were more canadians than americans or irish everyone spoke french but where i live now in the state of massachusetts there are not so many families however we call on one another in the evenings samuel once thought of going west said madame chapelaine but i was never willing among people speaking nothing but english i should have been unhappy all the rest of my days i used to say to him samuel we canadians are always better off among canadians when the french canadian speaks of himself it is invariably and simply as a canadian whereas for all the other races that followed in his footsteps and peopled the country across to the pacific he keeps the name of origin english irish polish russian never admitting for a moment that the children of these albeit born in the country have an equal title to be called canadians quite naturally and without thought of offending he appropriates the name won in the heroic days of his forefathers and is it a large town where you are ninety thousand said lorenzo with a little affectation of modesty ninety thousand bigger than quebec yes and we are only an hour by train from boston a really big place that and he set himself to telling of the great american cities and their magnificence of the life filled with ease and plenty abounding in refinements beyond imagination which is the portion of the well-paid artisan in silence they listened to his words framed in the open doorway the last crimson of the sky fading to paler tints rose above the vague masses of the forest a column resting upon its base the mosquitoes began to arrive in their legions and the humming of innumerable wings filled the low clearing with continuous sound tell us for directed the father make us a smudge take the old tin pail 
telesphore covered the bottom of the leaky vessel with earth filling it then with dry chips and twigs which he set ablaze when the flame was leaping up brightly he returned with an armful of herbs and leaves and smothered it the volume of stinging smoke which ascended was carried by the wind into the house and drove out the countless horde at length they were at peace and with sighs of relief could desist from the warfare the very last mosquito settled on the face of little alma rose with great seriousness she pronounced the ritual words fly fly get off my face my nose is not a public place then she made a swift end of the creature with a slap the smoke drifted obliquely through the doorway within the house no longer stirred by the breeze it spread in a thin cloud the walls became indistinct and far off the group seated between door and stove resolved into a circle of dim faces hanging in a white haze greetings to every one the tones rang clear and francois paradis emerging from the smoke stood upon the threshold for weeks maria had been expecting him half an hour earlier the sound of a step without had sent the blood to her cheek and yet the arrival of him she awaited moved her with joyous surprise offer your chair d'abbe cried mother chapdelaine four callers from three different quarters converging upon her truly nothing more was needed to fill her with delightful excitement an evening indeed to be remembered there you are forever saying that we are buried in the woods and see no company triumphed her husband count them over eleven grown-up people every chair in the house was filled estras tibet and de trop gagnon occupied the bench chapdelaine a box turned upside down from the step telesphore and alma rose watched the mounting smoke and look said ephraim surprenant how many young fellows and only one girl the young men were duly counted three chapdelaines eutrope gagnon lorenzo surprenant francois paradis as for the one girl every eye was turned upon maria who smiled feebly and looked down confused had you a good trip francois he went up the river with strangers to buy furs from the indians explained chapdelaine who presented to the others with formality francois paradis son of francois paradis from saint michel de mistassini eutrope gagnon knew him by name ephraim surprenant had met his father a tall man taller still than he of a strength not to be matched it only remained to account for lorenzo surprenant who has come home from the states and all the conventions had been honored a good trip answered francois no not very good one of the belgians took a fever and nearly died after that it was rather late in the season many indian families had already gone down to st anne de chicoutimi and could not be found and on top of it all a canoe was wrecked when running a rapid on the way back and it was hard work fishing the pelts out of the river without mentioning the fact that one of the bosses was nearly drowned the same one that had the fever no we were unlucky all through but here we are none the less and it is always another job over and done with a gesture signified to the listeners that the task was completed the wages paid and the ultimate profits or losses not his affair always another job over and done with he slowly repeated the words the belgians were in a hurry to reach peribonka on sunday tomorrow but as they had another man i left them to finish the journey without me so that i might spend the evening with you it does one's heart good to see a house again his glance strayed contentedly over the meagre smoke-filled interior and those who peopled it in the circle of faces tanned by wind and sun his was the brownest and most weather-beaten his garments showed many rents one side of the torn woolen jersey flapped upon his shoulder moccasins replaced the long boots he had worn in the spring he seemed to have brought back something of nature's wildness from the headwaters of the rivers where the indians and the great creatures of the woods find sanctuary 
and maria whose life would not allow her to discern the beauty of that wilderness because it lay too near her yet felt that some strange charm was at work and was throwing its influence about her estras had gone for the cards cards with faded red backs and dog-eared corners where the lost queen of hearts was replaced by a square of pink cardboard bearing the plainly written legend dame de coeur they played at quatre set the two surprenants uncle and nephew had madame chapdelaine and maria for partners after each game the beaten couple left the table and gave place to two other players night had fallen some mosquitoes made their way through the open window and went hither and thither with their stings and irritating music tell us for called out estras see to the smudge the flies are coming in in a few minutes smoke pervaded the house again thick almost stifling but greeted with delight the party ran its quiet course an hour of cards some talk with a visitor who bears news from the great world these are still accounted happiness in the province of quebec between the games lorenzo surprenant entertained maria with a description of his life and his journeyings in turn asking questions about her he was far from putting on airs yet she felt disconcerted at finding so little to say and her replies were halting and timid the others talked among themselves or watched the play madame recalled the many gatherings at st gedeon in the days of her girlhood and looked from one to the other with unconcealed pleasure at the fact that three young men should thus assemble beneath her roof but maria sat at the table devoting herself to the cards and left it for some vacant seat near the door with scarcely a glance about her lorenzo surprenant was always by her side and talking she felt the continual regard of eutrope gagnon with that familiar look of patient waiting she was conscious of the handsome bronzed face and fearless eyes of francois paradis who sat very silent beyond the door elbows on his knees maria is not at her best this evening said madame chapdelaine by way of excusing her she is really not used to having visitors you see had she but known four hundred miles away at the far headwaters of the rivers those indians who have held aloof from missionaries and traders are squatting round a fire of dry cypress before their lodges and the world they see about them as in the earliest days is filled with dark mysterious powers the giant wendigo pursuing the trespassing hunter strange potions carrying death or healing which wise old men know how to distill from roots and leaves incantations and every magic art and here on the fringe of another world but a day's journey from the railway in this wooden house filled with acrid smoke another all-conquering spell charming and bewildering the eyes of three young men is being woven into the shifting cloud by a sweet and guileless maid with downcast eyes the hour was late the visitors departed first the two surprenants then eutrope gagnon only francois paradis was left standing there and seeming to hesitate you will sleep here to-night francois asked the father his wife heard no reply of course said she and to-morrow we will all gather blueberries it is the feast of saint anne when a few moments later francois mounted to the loft with the boys maria's heart was filled with happiness this seemed to bring him a little nearer to draw him within the family circle the morrow was a day of blue sky a day when from the heavens some of the sparkle and brightness descends to earth the green of tender grass and young wheat was of a ravishing delicacy even the dun woods borrowed something from the azure of the sky francois came down in the morning looking a different man in clothes borrowed from dabbe and estras and after he had shaved and washed madame chapdelaine complimented him on his appearance 
when breakfast was over and the hour of the mass come all told their chaplet together and then the long delightful idle sunday lay before them but the day's programme was already settled the trompe gagnon came in just as they were finishing dinner which was early and at once they all set forth provided with pails dishes and tin mugs of every shape and size the blueberries were fully ripe in the burnt lands the purple of the clusters and the green of the leaves now overcame the paling rows of the laurels the children began picking at once with cries of delight but their elders scattered through the woods in search of the larger patches where one might sit on one's heels and fill a pail in an hour the noise of footsteps on dry twigs of rustling in the alder bushes the calls of telesphore and alma rose to one another all faded slowly into the distance and about each gatherer was only the buzzing of flies drunk with sunshine and the voice of the wind in the young birches and aspens there is a fine clump over here said a voice maria's heart beat faster as she arose and went towards francois paradis who was kneeling behind the alders side by side they picked industriously for a time then plunged farther into the woods stepping over fallen trees looking about them for the deep blue masses of the ripe berries there are very few this year said francois it was the spring frosts that killed the blossoms he brought to the berry seeking his woodsman's knowledge in the hollows and among the alders the snow was lying longer and kept them from freezing they sought again and made some happy finds broad clumps of bushes laden with huge berries which they heaped into their pails in the space of an hour these were filled they rose and went to sit on a fallen tree to rest themselves mosquitoes swarmed and circled in the fervent afternoon heat every moment the hand must be raised to scatter them after a panic-stricken flight they straightway returned reckless and pitiless bent only on finding one tiny spot to plant a sting with their sharp note was blended that of the insatiate black fly filling the woods with unceasing sound living trees there were not many a few young birches some aspens alder bushes were stirring in the wind among the rows of lifeless and blackened trunks francois paradis looked about him as though to take his bearings the others cannot be far away he said no replied maria in a low voice but neither he nor she called to summon them a squirrel ran down the bole of a dead birch tree and watched the pair with his sharp eyes for some moments before venturing to earth the strident flight of heavy grasshoppers rose above the intoxicated clamour of the flies a wandering air brought the falls dull thunder through the alders francois paradis stole a glance at maria then turned his eyes away and tightly clasped his hands ah but she was good to look upon thus to sit beside her to catch these shy glimpses of the strong bosom the sweet face so modest and so patient the utter simplicity of attitude and of her rare gestures a great hunger for her awoke in him and with it a new and marvellous tenderness for he had lived his life with other men in hard give and take among the wild forests and on the snowy plains well he knew she was one of those women who giving themselves give wholly reckoning not the cost love of body and of soul strength of arm in the daily task the unmeasured devotion of a spirit that does not waver so precious the gift appeared to him that he dared not ask it i am going down to grandmere next week he said almost in a whisper to work on the lumber dam but i will never take a glass not one maria hesitating a moment he stammered out eyes on the ground perhaps they have said something against me no it is true that i used to drink a bit when i got back from the shanties and the drive but that is all over now 
you see when a young fellow has been working in the woods for six months with every kind of hardship and no amusement and gets out to latouque or jonquiere with all the winter's wages in his pocket pretty often he loses his head he throws his money about and sometimes takes too much but that is all over and it is also true that i used to swear when one lives all the time with rough men in the woods or on the rivers one gets the habit once i swore a good deal and the cure mr tremblay took me to task because i said before him that i wasn't afraid of the devil but there is an end of that too maria all the summer i am to be working for two dollars and a half a day and you may be sure that i shall save money and in the autumn there will be no trouble finding a job as foreman in a shanty with big wages next spring i shall have more than five hundred dollars saved clear and i shall come back again he hesitated and the question he was about to put took another form upon his lips you will be here still next spring yes and after the simple question and simpler answer they fell silent and so long remained wordless and grave for they had exchanged their vows end of chapter five